Hi, I'm Vicki and I'm one of the aviculturists here at the California Academy of Sciences and I take care of the birds. We're in the rainforest right now and we are going to watch as we band one of our smaller birds. All the birds in here are banded for identification purposes. We just had some new chicks hatch, so we banded one of those and we're going to put some food out for the birds. We have multiple feeding stations throughout the rainforest and you'll see how the birds already know and are habituated to coming down into their feeding stations and into their catch cage. This is our permanent catch cage and we use this because we have to catch the birds every once in a while if one doesn't look right or we need to reband, anything like that. This stays here all the time. This is one of the feeding stations so the birds are habituated to come into this cage and eat. It stays open most of the time but you can see that we have a rope tied onto it so when we do need to catch up one of the birds, one of us has to kind of hide commando style over in the foliage and wait for the bird we want to fly in and then we just pull the rope and shut the door and that's how we managed to get a hold of the birds in this giant glass ball when they're flying around. So we have a fledged silverbeak tanager that we caught in our catch cage. And in order to tell the birds the same species apart, we like to put bands on them. So there's a the little guy. Oh, he's biting me. And we're going to put a little pink band. We've already weighed him. To get a good weight on him, we'll tell the hospital how much he weighs. And then we're going to put a little pink band on his right leg, on his right leg, and that will identify him. It's pretty easy. So he's going to be right pink 15. Every bird that's in the rainforest, all the free flying birds, have identifying bands on them of a color and a number. And that's how we do a bird count every morning. We have a master list and every morning we locate every single bird and check off that we've seen them and that they're healthy and doing well. So then we will just re-release this little guy if he ever lets go of me. Oh, that's good. I like to see feisty little birds. We might have a fecal. <laughs> yeah, we might have a fecal for the hospital. Do you want to just let him go? We're just going to let him go right back over here. Here he goes. We have two nectar feeding stations, so it's for the birds and the butterflies. Both eat the nectar. It took us a long time to come up with this design, which I'll show you. This little petri dish disc floats on top of the hi. <laughs> floats on top of the nectar, and we figured out we had to do something like that because the butterflies were getting stuck if there wasn't an island or something for them to perch on. So this works out fabulously because it floats on top, deep enough for the birds to get their nectar, but it also leaves a little island for the butterflies to float on. So we get three at each station, and they have two stations this out. Obviously we're getting... Everybody is very ready. We have 30 to 35 birds in here right now, 12 different species. Obviously they know where their feed stations are. And they are very ready to have their nectar. So these dishes lock. And this is also a nice way for us to get a bird count. We have some banana keats, honey creeper, a paradise tanager, a violaceous euphonia. Everybody's coming down for their morning meal. <laughs> some opal rump tanagers and a turquoise tanager, I see. Oh, and there's the female euphonia. We're looking for her. And these are locking feeders so that they can stay out here when the public's out here and the birds can come down and feed. This is called soft bill diet. It's a formulated pellet made by Missouri. It's got all kinds of the vitamins, minerals, everything that they need in it. And soft bills are large fruit eaters. So I imagine that the larger butterflies that eat the fruit, like the blue morphos and the all butterflies that like rotting fruit, 
That's why they land on that. And we soak it so that the butterflies can extract some of the nectar out of it with their proboscis.